Hi, I'm Sarah Delaney with One Big Happy Yarn Company. In this episode of our log cabin make along, I'm gonna show you how to make the crochet version of our log cabin blanket. And Jenny's gonna pepper me with questions while she works on her knit version. Uh, so let's get started. We've already talked about yarn. And mm -hmm. so let me talk about the other things that you're gonna need for this. You're gonna need a size G six, four millimeter crochet hook for this. Um, although gauge is not super critical. I mean, the yarn we're using is a DK weight, um, but we're not really aiming for a specific size blanket or a specific gauge. So if your gauge is a little more than what's listed in the pattern or a little less, you'll still be okay and it should still come out all right. You'll need a tapestry needle to weave in your ends. You'll need scissors for snipping your yarn. Um, and you will want some stitch markers especially if you need to walk away from your work, you always want to put a stitch marker in that live stitch so you can put it down and not worry about it coming out. And that's it, those are your materials. Um, if you don't have a kit yet, be sure to hop over to onebighappy.com where you can pick up a kit. Um, we'll have lots of great colors all picked out for you, similar to the blanket I've made, similar to the blanket that, uh, or the same as each of the blankets here, both in knit and crochet. Um, and lots of other options. Can I start asking questions? Yeah, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you said it's DK weight. Yes. And a lot of times when people are looking at yarn, they'll have numbers on it. Yes, so this falls in like a two to three range. So it's a lightweight yarn. It's not worsted, but it's not like a baby weight or a sport weight. Uh, all right, so to get started, we want to use a slip knot. So it's just a standard slip knot. Um, the only thing I like to point out about slip knots when I crochet is I like them to tighten and loosen with the tail and not the working yarn. Yep, so I'm just going to wrap the yarn around my fingers and then I'm going to grab that tail from behind to tighten it up. And then if I loosen that loop, you can see the tail gets shorter. If I pull on the tail, that loop tightens up. And I don't want it super tight on my hook. I just want it loose enough to be able to slide around. And then we're gonna start with a chain of 16. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we're working in single crochet through the back loop for this whole project. That's what gives us these great ridges that you can see in each of the sections. Uh, and we want our first square, that center square, to be 15 stitches wide. So that's why we started with a chain of 16. We're going to skip the first chain back from the hook and go into the second chain from the hook. Now normally, or the easily, most people would just go under this top loop of the chain to make your first stitch, but I'm a little bit precious and fancy with this project, and I'm actually gonna flip my chain over and work into the back bump. So Is that I, the one that looks like a pearl bump? Yes, yeah. So if I flip my chain over, you can see there's these bumps that run down the middle of the chain. So I'm actually gonna work into those bumps. So not the first one back from the hook, but the second one back from the hook. And these can be a little fidgety. Sometimes you need to help your hook get through those bumps, and it's just a single crochet. If you're having a really hard time getting your hook through this bump, it's a hook. Turn your hook over and actually use it as a hook to get through that bump. I'll show you that again, and then just finish your single crochet. So here's that next bump. I'm gonna turn my hook over and actually use the hook to get in under that bump. I think that's one thing that, that a lot of crocheters forget about their tool is that it is an actual hook. You can use it that way sometimes. And then I'm just gonna work my way across this chain, one single crochet in each chain, all the way across until you have the 15. So I'm almost at the end, there's one more stitch and sometimes this stitch is a little bit tight but that little bump is still there. So you can use your hook to get under it. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta go at it more than one time. And, come, and sometimes you catch a little bit of the last strand of yarn. 
And I have a question for you. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay, so I, I don't crochet very much. One of the problems that I have when I crochet and I'm trying to make a square, it sometimes ends up like a... Yeah, so the this. first and the last stitch are always tricky to figure out where you are. Um, so I can show you a trick to help with that. Um, what you want to do is put a stitch marker in the first stitch of the row and I'll I'll add that in as I go through here because then the next time you usually that happens because people don't know where the last stitch in the row is so okay. they go too far or they don't go far enough and so you end up with angled edges instead of straight edges so I'll show you how to do that that's a great question um, for for this for row two we're working through the back loop and so that's you get to the end of the row and you turn your work over and you work through the back loop. I always find that it's hard to find the back loop from the front side of your work. So I actually start the next row before I have turned. Uh, when you start the next row, you're going to chain one and then it says one single crochet in the back loop of each stitch across. So here I am still looking at the end of row one and I can see the front loop of that stitch right there for me. When I flip this over, that'll be the back loop. So what I can do is put my hook under that front loop now and then turn my work over and my hook is in the right place and I'm not having a hard time finding it. So then I can yarn over and bring up a loop and complete my first single crochet. And then to answer Jenny's question, let me just loosen up that loop there so it's a little easier to see. So this single crochet that I just finished right there has those two loops at the top. What I'm going to do is take a locking stitch marker and put it in that stitch. And then when I come back on the next row, I will know that that's the last stitch. All right, let me tighten my yarn back up and I'm going to keep going. Now that that first stitch is in the back loop, it's easier for me to find the back loop of the next stitch. To work into. Back loop, single crochet, back loop, single crochet. And I'm just going to work the back loop only, single crochet, all the way across. And here I am at the last stitch. And again, the this is Jenny's great question. The last stitch can be a little bit hard to find. And sometimes it looks a little bit different. Finish that one up. Again, I'm going to chain one, then I'm going to find that front loop, then I'm going to turn my work and do my stitch, and then I'm going to grab a stitch marker. All right, so let me work across this row, and you really only need two stitch markers to keep those edges straight. Let me work back across this row to where we put that first stitch marker, and you'll see how that helps out. Okay, so here I am at the last stitch of the row and you can see that stitch marker hanging out in that last stitch. So I know that that's where I'm going to go. And you can even leave that stitch marker in there and work your stitch and then take your stitch marker out. So with crochet, are all of your stitch markers that you use the locking style like you wouldn't be able to use the ring style like we do no. in knitting. If I tried to if I tried to use a ring style stitch marker it would just get stuck in the work. So you need that to That makes use, sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's there's no needle, there's no cord or anything for those for the stitches to sort of slide around and live on. So you have to use locking stitch markers. All right, so I'm gonna start the next row. I'm gonna chain one into that front loop. Complete that first stitch. And then I'm going to put that stitch marker back into that first stitch so I can find it when I come back on the next row. So then I'll work my way across this row till I get to where that stitch marker is. That'll be the last stitch of the row. And you are going to work 15 rows. So 15 rows of uh, back loop single crochet. Uh, and let me show you what that looks like. All right, so I've got my center square done. I don't need stitch markers marking where the end of the rows are anymore, so you won't see those here. I just have one here, and it's holding my working loop because I had to set this aside for a bit. You only ever have one stitch on your hook, so if you're working along and you need to step away from your work, take your hook out, 
put a stitch marker in that loop and lock it and then it just cannot be pulled out and unraveled. It will save your peace of mind. So I can take that little stitch marker out. I can pop my hook in here and I'm ready to move on to the next square. So let me pull this in here so you can see it. So this is our center square here. And now we're gonna be working on this square over here. So we're gonna turn the work 90 degrees to work on this next square that turns this into a rectangle. So the first thing I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna take out that last stitch that I made because this makes our color transition easier. So if you follow along and you watched um, the knit version of the log cabin blanket with Jenny, which is a fun episode, um, you know that she bound off that top edge on her center square. And we don't have to do that because every stitch that we make in crochet essentially binds itself off. So we get to go right from a live stitch to another live stitch. So I'm gonna redo this last stitch of the row, but I'm not gonna do the last yarn over to complete it. I, that's where I'm gonna change yarns. Ah. So if I change yeah, my I color, see. yeah, you have that little orange here. Yeah, you see that right there? I have one orange stitch here. Yep. So what you're doing in the crochet version will prevent that little color oh, bleed. Let me watch yep. how you do that. Maybe I can figure out. Oh, sure. Trans translate it into the knitting. Yeah, let me go right back. All right, so I have one stitch left to go. I'm gonna start it with my existing color, but before I do the last yarn over, I'm gonna grab my new color, I'm just holding a loop, and I'm gonna pull my new color through. So that stitch, when it's complete, it's all the right color, oh. but now the yarn on my hook is the next color that I'm gonna use. Okay, yeah, and see in mine, what I was doing was when I was weaving in my ends, I just, I tugged oh, it. Oh, you tugged it tight and it disappeared. <laughs> so the but other, like yeah, <laughs> little trick, little trick for you. I gotta find my tail, it's hiding back there. This yarn has such a great fuzz to it that it really holds on to itself well. So the other little trick that I'm gonna show you, um, and this is a great thing with crochet, is you can crochet over your ends as you go. It's not 100% secure when you do that. You still need to weave in your ends to really secure your work, but it, it sort of just holds everything in place for you and keeps the tension on your stitches. So I'm gonna chain one to start this row. And then you can see that I have both of my tails here, the tail from the old color and the tail from the new color. They're just sort of sitting along the top of these stitches. I'm just gonna keep them there. And as I work these next four or five stitches, they'll get tucked inside. So I have 15 rows. These ridges make it easy to count. Every ridge is two rows. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I want 15 stitches along this side, one for each row. I'm gonna go back into the top of this stitch here for my first stitch, single crochet. And we're, there's no front loop, back loop here as we're picking up along the edge. We're just picking up along the edge. And then each of these ridges between the top of the ridge here and the top of the ridge here, I'm gonna need two stitches. So you can almost see what looks like a V right here. Those two legs there come together. I'm gonna go right between the legs of that V for my next stitch. And then there's a little spot right there. I'm gonna go in there for my second stitch. If you get off a little, does it really, will it cause a big deal or, I mean, will it show up? Not really. I mean, picking up, um, Picking up stitches along the edge of crochet is not necessarily as pretty as it is with knitting. So it's not hugely important, um, but it's always good to try and be consistent with your stitch placement. So if you're going along and you find, you know what, I really like placing my stitches a little bit differently, that's okay. This is just where I have found that I like to place my stitches. All right, so my tail got a little bit tangled in there. so. I'm actually gonna tuck those away now because I've worked over them for about an inch and that's fine. You can see them back here on this side. They're inside those stitches. 
I'm just going to hold them down now and I can finish weaving them in later. Uh, okay. And then I'm just going to continue to work my way across here, picking up those stitches in the same places. Two for each ridge. And don't worry if you are a little bit slower in your stitching than me. I do this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to double check my stitch count. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And my fifteenth stitch, you can see my tail here, I'm actually going to put it right into that very first chain at the bottom. Oh, right into that very first chain at the bottom. And that's the end of my first row. So this, you can see the chains at the bottom, how nice and pretty are they are. If you, if you watched the knit version with Jenny, remember she did those slip stitches and had such a pretty edge. This is almost the same kind of thing. This is why we worked into the back bump of that chain. Eventually we're gonna have to work along this side and it makes it easier to pick up those stitches when we do. So from here, it's exactly the same thing that you did in that first square. We chain one, we go under that front loop because when we turn it over, that's the back loop. And then we single crochet our way across. Nice and easy in those back loops all the way across. If you still feel like you need those stitch markers at, uh, in the first stitch of the row to help you find it when you come back in the next row, you can certainly do that. Um, it's, it's a tool that you can use to help make your projects easier. Take the guesswork out of it. Never be afraid to use the tools that work for you. Ah, let me show you this little bit here at the end. So I'm in the last stitch but it almost looks like there's another stitch here. There isn't. That's just the turning chain that we came off of when we changed color. So if you're unsure of how many stitches, you can count or you can use those stitch markers at both ends to help you out. Um, but I'm just gonna continue for 15 rows. And that's in the crochet pattern, that's it. It's 15 rows for every color block. Now my question too is your stitches look a lot thicker, like your fabric looks a lot thicker than mine. Mine looks a little bit thinner. Is that just due to the crochet stitch itself? Yeah. And Yes. So the, the physical structure of a crochet stitch involves more yarn than a knit stitch. So a knit stitch is just a loop of yarn connected to a loop below and a loop above. Mm -hmm. And crochet stitches typically have at least one more strand. So there's, they're a little bit more dense. Um, but not terribly so. I mean, we both used about the same amount of yarn and we have and the same, same size, size blanket. So <laughs> it's a little bit more, but not too much. So you're just going to continue in this second block for your 15 rows. And then we will pick up the next section. So I have my first square, the center square done. Then I've done my second section. Now I'm going to pick up along this whole side here and work on my third section. And let me show you what that looks like because you're going to transition from picking up along the edge of one section and then pick up along the bottom of the next section. And that will be happening throughout the blanket. So to start the third section, I'm just going to redo this last stitch. Now as you're working along, you'll know, okay, I'm on the last stitch of this section. This is where I need to change colors. You won't have to take a stitch out to do this. I've just got my little samples here to show you. I'm going to start this last stitch and then I'm going to grab my new color. I'm going to grab a loop and pull it through to finish that last stitch. So the last stitch is completed in the old color and the new color is a loop on my hook. See that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. I wish I would have thought of some way of <laughs> not doing that with mine. <laughs> but this is part of what working together on stuff. Yeah. Oh, but definitely. It's part of what makes it so great. So she's a knitter, I'm crocheting, 
but we can learn from each other and teach each other stuff. And then the same way we did on the last block, I'm going back into that very first stitch, then I'm going to find the two legs of that V there. I'll go in there for a stitch, and then here for a stitch, and I'm working over my tails for four or five stitches just to lock them in place. And I can come back later and weave them in. I'm going to tuck those behind and work my way across this second block. One stitch for every row. So we're going to have 15 stitches. Man, the colors on this sheep cheese wool are just so pretty. Oh, I love them. I love the, them. The core of the yarn is one color, and then it has this fuzzy halo and another color. So I'm pretty sure right now I have 14 stitches. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, shoot. I was trying to count mine at the same time. <laughs> Not a good idea. Just don't count at the same time. <laughs> And I'm going to want 15 across here, and I know that I'm going to want them in the bottom of that chain. So to make sure that I don't put my 15th stitch from this side too far over here, I'm going to count backwards along this chain. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I'm going to put my 15th stitch from this block here. I'm just going to tuck that tail out of the way for a second. There's 15 there. Now I can crochet over this tail as my work as I work my way along this block. These chain stitches are easy to find because we worked into the back bump of that foundation chain when we started the first block. All right, I've worked over my tail a few times. These chain stitches you may find to be a little bit tight because it's a foundation chain. And you can flip your hook over and use it as a hook if you need to. That is always an option. Tools are tools. Use them when they are helpful. Don't be afraid. So I'm just gonna work my way across the bottom edge of this block until I've got 15 stitches. And that's the magic number in the crochet version of this blanket is 15. Every time you work your way across the end of a block, you'll need 15 stitches. So I've got 15 and 15, so I've got 30. I'm going to chain one, go into that front loop that's facing me, because when I flip it over, it'll be the back loop. And then I'm just going to single crochet through the back loop on the way back. And that's it. Every block is connected like that. When I finish this block, so when I finish this block that I'm working on here, then I'll pick up along the edge of that block and then along the edge of this block and I'll be working back and forth this way. And it just continues that way around and around and around here. Let me bring, bring the blanket in so I can show you. So here on the finished blanket, this is the center square that we started with. And then we picked up stitches and worked out this block, and then we picked up stitches and worked up this block. Then you'll turn again, pick up stitches. So you see how this goes. You're just going to turn, pick up stitches, work your rows, turn, pick up stitches, work your rows. Every time you turn, you're going to pick up 15 here. This one, remember, was 15 and 15, so that's 30 there, and then another 15. So you'll have 60 stitches. So every time you turn aside, it's 15 stitches longer. And that's the same philosophy with the knit, except for there's a different Yeah, there's stitch a different count. number, but that'll all be spelled out specifically in your pattern. Um, and so that's it. And so you really could, you really could just keep going and going and going with however much yarn you have. So you're just going to continue with your blocks like that. Um, and you'll find some, some of your balls of yarn, you'll have more yarn left than others. It doesn't exactly use up your yarn evenly. 
Um, and then I decided to put a border on with the three colors that I had left. Um, and I worked it the same way. So I turned and I was ready to start another block. Uh, but instead I started my border and I did uh, two rows of my orangey color and then two rows of that minty color, two rows of the teal, and then one more row of the red. That helped me use up the yarn. Then I turned the work and did the same thing on the next side, turned the work and did the same thing on the next side. Are you, oh, you're ready for another color, aren't you? Yes, and what I wanna try want? kind of what you did. I left two stitches here and I'm gonna knit into those with the new color and see if that takes away that. Oh, the blip of color? What yeah. color do you want? Uh, hand me the green one. I'm just gonna test that out. So I, I love the color freedom with this blanket. So I, we both worked with five colors. You And our kits will have five colors in them as well. Um, but once you get a pattern like this, you know, in your brain, and it's really easy to remember, you can go with almost any color. I've seen some really pretty log cabins that were monochrome, all the same color. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then you could also even do smaller blocks and then seam them all together when you're done. Oh, yeah, like a granny square blanket, but with little log cabin squares. So once you have the technique of this in mind, you can sort of fudge the numbers, make it a little bit smaller. You can make the strips thinner. Um, in the knit version, the strips are a little bit thinner than that beginner. Ah, it, see, worked. it works. It worked. So use her technique if you're knitting and you can not have that one stitch of the Yeah, so when you finish that color. last stitch of a row, <laughs> Before you change, you want to change color with that last stitch, the last yarn over. Yep. What was your favorite part of this project? Um, I like the fact that we were both doing the same thing, but we both kind of just let our creative, I mean, we had the the goal of the log cabin, um, and but then we come back and we're like, wow, they're so close to the same. <laughs> um, and we did it in different styles. Um, I loved coming up with the idea of the slip stitch on the end. I had fun with oh, that. I thought that was beautiful. Um, this yarn I is know. absolutely amazing. <laughs> like, I kid you not, it's, it's amazing. Um, and then to know that I could take this even later on down the road, if I wanted to make it larger, I can so totally do that. All I have to do is pick up the stitches on one end yeah. and just add to it. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. <gasps> yeah. So you could make a little one for the kids, but then they're off to college and they want a bigger one. You just pick it up and keep going. Yeah. You could add more yeah. to it. <laughs> so that's our log cabin make along. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank um, you for being here with me. <laughs> I love oh it. Oh my Every gosh. Of it. I had so much fun today. This is exciting. Yeah. We'll have to do more of these. If you want to see us do more of these, leave a comment down below saying, Absolutely. hey, we want Jenny and Sarah together. Let us know. And yeah, tell we'll us make what it you'd love to learn how to make, <laughs> what you and your opposite craft friends are learning, you know, wanting to make together. And we'll see what we can come up with. Yeah, right. and join our Facebook group, the One Big Happy Yarn Company Makers. Yep. Yep. Show us your projects, Absolutely. show us your progress, ask your questions. We'll both hop in and help out. Definitely. Thank you so much. Happy. Happy making. Making. <laughs>